you know how much the Lord cares for you? One revelation we have to have is how much he cares for us. There's very little we're going to be able to accomplish, get, do, apart from that. The Bible says, apart from him, you can do nothing. Apart from him, I can do nothing. But what does it mean to abide in the vine and to abide in the love of Christ? This isn't something someone can give you. you. You've got to draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God so that he draws nigh to you. But his love, his love is everlasting. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. I thank you for all those who showed up here tonight. And Holy Spirit, ask, give them something. You know what each one needs. You know what's on their hearts. Lord, there are those who are grieving right now. And Lord, we pray now. You're the one who heals the broken heart. And Lord, apart from you, we can do nothing. Heal, Lord. You are the great physician. I thank you for your love. Yes, it is your love that casts out fear. Perfect love does that. And we thank you for it. Thank you for loving me. Father, we thank you for protecting and blessing our pastors and all those who journeyed to Jerusalem from this area and all those from abroad. We ask that you keep them safe. And Lord, we ask that you keep us safe. And I pray now that we remain in tune to you, that we remain in step with you. Oh, yes, Lord. You spared no good gift from us. For all of your promises in Christ Jesus, oh, yes and amen. We thank you for it. And yes, Holy Spirit, I ask now do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> this tonight, I wanted to talk and not preach, but talk about kingdom living uh, internally. What does it mean to live internally? Internal living, uh, kingdom living, uh, and go through some of the scriptures that we have for that. But really uh, get to sort of the nitty gritty of that. What does it mean to live kingdom? What does it mean to live internally? Um, let's just go to some scriptures and and uh, hopefully we can get something out of this that we can take with us and take to the world. I love Brother Jeff and his, you know, his heart for evangelism. You know, those of us who've been around him, you know, he's uh, he'll fearlessly jump in the fire and just do what he can for people. That's just such a blessing. It's encouraging. He encourages me. And I know when he's up here and he's talking about it, you know, he's living it. And I, like so many of you are. When we go out into the field, you know, we're motivated because he first loved me. He first loved me. This is not something you do in your own strength. This is not carnal living. This is not something you can conjure up in your mind. This is not mental ascent. This is spirit-led living. You're motivated by the love of the living God who says, those who worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth. We're not trying to reason our way or rationalize our way into the hearts of people. You just can't do it. There have been too many times I felt like here I am witnessing and there's this person there right, they're just about to, to yield. And then the mind will take over. But one sows another water. God provides the increase. We remain encouraged. And as Brother Jeff said, when we're out there, our job is to share the good news of the love of Jesus Christ. What we know in Matthew, excuse me, in John 16, 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In the world, you will have tribulation. Are we of the world? We're in the world, but we're not of it. 
God expects us to have his perfect peace in this time. His perfect peace. Brother Jeff, what you up here smiling about? See, we don't know, not everybody knows his testimony. Not everybody knows your testimony. But yeah, it should come out of you sometime. It should come out of you. That love of God should come out of you. As my wife has said, shared with me many times, the Holy Spirit gave it to her. You've got to know you're his favorite. When you're walking down the halls, wherever you are, as, as the word says, you're the light. You've got to know that you're his favorite, that God will do anything for you. Now, you say, wait, well, say anything. What did the word say? For if he's willing to give his only son for us, how much more will he freely give us all things? Things that pertain to life and godliness, good things, God things. So we can pour this out into others. You can't keep it inside. One of the cautions I have as believers is that we're asking God to do things for us that he's already said, uh, you know, we can do. He said, you can cast out demons. You can lay hands on the sick. You'll raise the dead. And sometimes we're asking God to come when he says, I've already given you this authority. And we're to move in it. When people see you, they should see Jesus. They should see the love of Christ in you and in me. When you show up, people should be, oh, things are about to change. And I felt Brother Jeff's heart when he said he, walked, he thinks he walked by that man. You know, you start wondering, Lord, did you give me an unction? Did you urge me to say something? I've shared the testimony of my, my sister-in-law when she was uh, teaching in one of the public schools, and they had basically banned it, but she was still sharing the, the gospel with children and, and shared it with one young lady who ended up getting murdered that year, but got born again in a classroom. We have these opportunities, but we have to know that it's motivated by one thing. It, it's one thing that's going to get you up in the morning. That's, that's the love of God. That's what, that's what makes you fearless. Is when you get to the root of it, it's the love of God. The kingdom of God is a love kingdom. It's a love kingdom. We have the most precious gift in the kingdom. The most precious gift in the kingdom is the gift of the Son. How much more can God give us than his only begotten son? The center of our attention, of our being, is the most precious gift in the kingdom. Faith is our ability to connect and remain connected with the Father. One of the things I, I, it concerns me this, at this time, and it may concern some of you, is our ability to focus. You say, focus on what? We focus on the word. We focus on God. We focus on his Holy Spirit. We focus on God, because right now, we've come out of one of the most divided times. There was so much division, so many people hurt. We're wrestling with things that are not of God. We say, oh, let's come together, let's get together. There's power in agreement, but who knows that you can, we can all gather, but not be in agreement. We're talking about power in agreement. What can we agree on? There's only one thing we can all agree on, and that's the Word of God. The Word of God. If we stay divided, we stay, uh, we lose our focus, because the enemy knows if he can get us all focused, if he can get us carnal, you're not effective. God says it in Romans 8, 5, and 6. For those, I'll read it. Romans 8, 5, and 6, the word says, and we're talking about kingdom living, internal living. Romans 8, 5, and 6 says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. 
How many of you know there's some people you just don't want to be around because all they're talking about is politics and social stuff and it's just not where your focus is. But those who live according to the Spirit, Holy Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I remember when I was about 18 years old, my aunt had given me a Bible before I headed to college, and I remember coming across this scripture. And there, was, there were times it was difficult growing up. There were some difficult times. Maybe some of you had some difficult times, but there were some difficult times. But I remember reading this scripture and asking God, what is peace? What is peace? I'd had some good times. I'd, I'd rested and fell asleep, waking up to my grandma's cooking. I mean, that was an amazing feeling. But I didn't really know what peace was. Most, many of the people we're around every day don't know what peace is. We need the Prince of Peace. We have the Prince of Peace. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God expects us to manifest his peace. In a world of tribulation, these are difficult times. I'm sure like many of you, these things, this is an emotional time. My, my concern going into this next season with the politics, I don't know that the church can continue to take these this, this, these, these assaults of the enemy. God said, the world is going to recognize you by how much you love each other. But we've come out of a time where it didn't look like love. It didn't look like love. It didn't look like we were loving each other. How are we supposed to be effective in the world? Because the world needs love. The world needs peace. And God has already told us. He said, he said very clearly in 2 Timothy uh, 2, 3, and 6, he says, Ye therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Matthew 11 and, 11 and 12 says, For the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. We're in a spiritual warfare. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So our lives are consumed with the things of God. We don't get entangled, caught up in those things that would distract us from being effective in the kingdom. It's easy to do. Some of us think we're smarter than the devil. But we have the spirit of intelligence. We have the Holy Spirit. This isn't something you're going to be able to reason and rash. You know, he, he, he has ways to pull us all in. I know he, it wasn't just me. So many of us can, can get pulled in. And God says, you've got to be careful that you don't offend anybody. We've got to constantly and consistently be walking in the love of Christ. We need God right now. We need him right now. The world needs him and the world needs you. What the world is looking for, they're looking for real soldiers for Christ. And you can't tell everybody they ain't got problems. But you can point them to the one who can solve them. You can tell someone I love you and they know whether you mean it. I was listening, witnessing to a dear sister in the office the other day after seeing her the second time. And just share with her a little bit of my testimony. I don't know much about her background, but she was struggling. And we just started talking a little bit about peace and the peace of God. She acknowledged that she didn't know peace. She didn't know peace. 
But she accepted the Prince of Peace. Right then and there. And wept as the Holy Spirit took over the place. In that little room. When I was at Duke years ago, and I left the podium and, and speaking engagements all over the country, being groomed to be a speaker and, and to be an influencer, as they would say, but at the highest levels. And the Lord said, you're not going there. You're not staying at Duke. You're going to go where people don't know your name. And when that woman gave her life to Christ, as we've seen them give their lives to Christ, there's nothing that compares to that. See, people want something authentic. They want something authentic. And I remember asking a friend years ago, what is authentic? What is authentic? I didn't know what authentic was. I just knew I didn't feel authentic. I had one position when I was around one group of people and another position around another group of people. I had my homeboys who adapt up one way and then when I went, you know, into the academic setting, I had a handshake for them. What does authentic mean? Because I didn't know. I spent most of my life trying to dance and figure out, you know, what my superiors expected of me and meet their expectations. What does authentic mean? And in the Greek, the word for sincerity means eilakrinia. It means literally judged by sunlight. You and I might look at it, and some of us call us super spiritual people. It's literally being judged by the, by the light of the sun of God. Being able to literally stand up to his inspection. It says the word alludes to the oriental bazaars where pottery was displayed in dimly lit rooms. Unscrupulous merchants would patch up uh, cracked pottery or cover defects with wax. Intelligent buyers would hold up the pottery in the sunlight. And eloquenia means to be transparent, honest, genuine, purity, manifested clarity, and unsullied in innocence. It describes one who does not fear thorough examination of his motives, intents, because he has nothing to hide. Another way of putting this, it's freedom. It's peace in who you are. It's peace in your redeemed, born again, new state. And that's not something we need to hide right now. Eloquenia. And the Bible says, in faith, sorry about my notes here, Pastor's fan is going on. Uh, now, it says, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting uh, life. One of the things that I had to examine coming out of these last three years, because some looked at me and said, Mark, are you in fear? You're walking in a room and you don't know what you're dealing with and there's COVID. You know that's going all over the place. Are you in fear? And I had, because fear is not faith. See, everyone's faith is different. The Bible says you, can, you don't need to eat something that's going to weaken somebody else's faith. Some people would take off a mask. Because we got to examine ourselves, right? But we also have to realize that we, our responsibility is to that, is to God and to that unbeliever. We can't do things to weaken someone else's faith. Walking in those rooms, there were things I learned about myself. But one thing I recognized, there was a peace which did not make sense that I had. Oh, there was no vaccine. There, was no, there were people dying. There were people I knew were dying. It did not make sense. 
And it was that peace that guides us. It's that peace that guides us now. Because you can look around, the world is struggling. And you and I both know that it's not getting easy. As they say, the struggle is real. There's only one way out. There's only one way. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. I know we all want to come back together, and, and it's been a tough three years. We've been blessed here to have faithful servants that day in and day out preach the love and the word of God. Uncompromising when it comes to the word of God. The Bible says that abide in these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. That means our faith, which we know our faith pleases God, doesn't work unless we are in love. And what does love look like? Love is honest. Love is the truth. I don't have all the answers, but I know who does. And I can love you. I can love you to life. God expects us to connect with others through him and enable him to connect with others through us. One of the things that this peace is not an outward peace. You know, we see so many people. You can't manipulate this peace. What did God tell us? He said the kingdom of God doesn't come with observation. It's not a natural kingdom. You can't manipulate it. You can't you know, you can't go on vacation, all of a sudden you're going to have God's peace. That doesn't bring, that's not the peace. This is, this is an internal kingdom gift. This is something we get from intimacy and spending time with God. But the enemy wants to get us off kilter. He wants us distracted and not focused on the things that really matter. Because we know all of this is going to pass away. But his word is what we can count on. And are we living it? I'm not going to pretend and tell you what you're experiencing and what you're feeling isn't real. But whatever I tell you, it's got to line up with the word. People are not interested in my opinion, I find. If they are, I'm not interested in their flattery. Because I don't, as Jesse Duplantis once said, I don't even believe everything I say. How can I trust what I say unless it lines up with the word of God? You say, okay, well, Doc, what are you talking about? The Bible says this is the profession of our faith. That word profession is homologio. It's the Greek word that means confession. And confession, this word means to agree with. So my word must agree with God's word. Anything else is a lie. Because let who be true? Let God be true and every man a liar. So that's what we think, that's what happens with opinions. And do know, I received my fair share of them these last two or three years. Let God be true and every man a liar. We must, we must take our position in God and speak his word. You know, it's not, in the, the beauty of, of kingdom and living in peace is that it, it's not, not only is it not carnal, it's not even influenced by others' opinions. It's not even influenced by your opinion of yourself. It's the truth. You get to line up with it or not. Is God going to take back his word? So if God says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they will be healed, he's not going to take that back. It's up to us to believe it. 
God is, one thing we can rest assured is God is not going back on his word. In Luke 17, 21, the Bible says that the kingdom, Jesus responded when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Who is, who is it in? It's within you. The kingdom. And I think we talk about the kingdom, but we need to be reminded what the kingdom of, kingdom of God is. But we know that it's love, right? We know it's joy. And we know it's peace in the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, and peace. And I look around and I see uh, the saints sitting here and I just think how blessed, how blessed you are. I love you all. Because I know y'all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's, that's an incredible, it's, it's supernatural, it's an amazing gift for you to have God in you. The living God, the God who raised Jesus from the dead. The same spirit of God in you. Question is, what are we going to do with all that God in you? What are you going to do with all that God in you? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. This is what comes out of you when the Holy Spirit is within you. But he tells us what to do. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. I took a major exam recently. And as I was driving, I was reminded. I was so caught up in this exam. We have to take this every 10 years. I had to be reminded. Oh, praying in the Holy Ghost. What a gift it is. Well, you're no longer thinking in your head. You're connecting right with God. Bypassing all that anxiety. God bless you. And he says to us, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that you, you are not disqualified. These aren't Mark's words. These, this is the word. You are not disqualified. On the contrary, you are quite qualified. The Bible says that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are in right standing with God. As I was coming in and thinking about the love of God, and I said to myself, God loves me. Can you all say that? God loves me. Can you say that again? God loves me. And can you say it one more time? And one more time. When you say that enough, doesn't something get released? Because first it's the truth. See, anything you say that lines up with the word of truth that comes out of your mouth is the same out of the heart of a believer as God saying. How can you say what God says and it be a lie? Brother Jeff said we need to pray for boldness. If Paul had to pray for boldness, I believe we have to pray for boldness. The world is not comfortable with the word of God. Sounds super spiritual, whatever you want to call it, but it's the truth. See, if you go around and they're like, hey, why are you smiling, Brother Jeff? 
Why are you smiling? Oh, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. I'm his favorite. There you go. See, you can be, we can both be his favorite. Who knows that we can all be God's favorite? We can all be God's favorite. You know why? Because you are. You are his favorite. It doesn't matter. We've got to be careful of these divisions. Who knows that we can disagree without being disagreeable? Pastor said this years ago when we were in the small church. He said, when you become a Christian, you lose your right to be right. Now, don't act like I'm the only one who knows a lot of people were coming across pretty right these last two or three years. But when you be, get born again, you lose that right to be right. The only one who's right is the Word of God. We got all these folks prophesying, some prophet lying. We know it's true. And the only way you're going to know whether someone is telling the truth is you've got to hear from the Spirit of God yourself. As a kingdom citizen, you have a legal right to know what's going on. You have a legal right to know what's going on. You say, well, oh, come on. come. Where does that come? Well, the Bible says... In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear, nor have entered to the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. This is stuff that the world may not see. He says, but, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit will share with you the deep things of God. Why? Because God loves you. We can get so busy that we, we, we get distracted. It happens to all of us. My wife said, oh, don't go in that store. And I, I tried to override. And then as we drove up, because I was a little careful, because she had already said, be careful, I realized, you know what, I ain't going in that store. We don't need to know everything. We don't need to figure out. Does it, does it have to make sense in your head? As a physician, I realize I don't try to figure it all out. That's the beauty of this thing. God has already figured it out. He knows, it, and I know him. I've never met a physician, anyone who can tell you how healing takes place. It's supernatural. Just like you and I exist supernatural. My prayer for us is that we would demonstrate the love of God that we would abide in his peace because the world is looking for peace. And it's not going to come through observation. It's not going to come through a political candidate. It's not going to come through whoever's sitting in the office. As my wife has this little uh, sticker, she has stickers on her car. She says, no matter who's president, Jesus Christ is king. And she's had it for years. It isn't based on whoever's in office. See, this isn't... Uh, uh, a political statement. It's the truth. Right? It's not my decision what side you're on. As long as you stay on God's side. You vote for who you want to vote for. As long as you're in agreement with that word. Because who? Let God be true, right? And every man a liar. As we move forward, as I said, the, what happened to the church, in many ways, it devastated people. People I knew stopped going. A bunch of pharisaical spirits, should, you know, trying to be right. But as pastor said, you lose that right when you become born again. Because you only choose to believe and to say what God says. You're about his business. We don't get entangled into the affairs of this world. Not that you don't acknowledge him, but that's not our place. We want to see people born again. We want to see people saved. 
We want people to have the peace of God. When that woman wept, and I felt the presence of the Holy Ghost, oh, that's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord. I saw a young man, we were in the process of relocating. He came out to pick up some stuff that we were sewing into a friend of ours. And we were, you just never know what the Lord is doing. And this young man was helping our friend to move her stuff along with some other movers. And I looked at him and I just asked him, oh, what's your name? I just wanted to engage him. And he said, my name is such and such. I actually said his name was Maverick. And I knew it was a young, usual name. And I looked at it and immediately we embraced and loved on each other. Because when he was in the hospital years ago, I had witnessed to this man and laid and poured and poured. We couldn't stop hugging him. And he told his friends, you remember that doctor I told you about? This is him. Now, now don't, don't get me wrong. I don't want any of your prayers. So let's, let's, I don't need it. Don't want it. Because to God be all the glory. But one thing he did say, he said, everything you prophesied over me, God has done. He said, I'm actually witnessing and living in the Salvation Army and telling people about Jesus. He said, it wasn't an easy process. But God delivered me. It's a get to. And when you get to the place where you're like, no, it's a got to for me. I've got to. Because God has been so good to me. I've got to. I can't let you leave out of this room without telling you Jesus loves you. I can't let you leave out of this room and just hear this testimony that, look, don't, I'm not looking down on you because I've probably been in, in places even worse than you. But if he can save me, he can save you. It is a get-to. And we've got to realize that that power, that love is in us. It's in you. I'm just going to conclude with this. Matthew. Mm, praise Jesus. It says, Matthew 11 and 11 and 12, Surely I say to you, among those born of women, there is not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All those prophets who came before John the Baptist, he said John the Baptist was the greatest. But he said, he who is least, a newborn babe in Christ, is greater than John the Baptist. That's what Jesus said. It's not only a get to, but as we can see the urgency of the state of things, it's becoming a got to. We've got to do it now. And we cannot afford to be distracted. We need focus. We've got to stay focused on the word of God. And we're blessed in this house that we get to take away solid food. We are, as I've shared with someone just recently, pastor doesn't serve little appetizers. He serves a solid meal every time. You get, you get well fed. You get well, we, get, we get well fed here. But who knows that it's not enough. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not just what you heard. It's your hearing every day, all the time, inclining our ear to hear from the Holy Spirit. We get set up to be successful here. But it's up to us to stay in tune and not distracted from the Holy Spirit and what he's saying to us. I bless you all. Well, this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of saints here. We are blessed here. And it is a get to. And I know so many of you, you have that sense of urgency that you've got to share this, 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 this love of Christ in you. But my prayer is that we stay focused and we stay encouraged. This was not a, this was not a sermon to preach. 
but it's to be reminded of what we've got to do. I'm believing God for more souls to be saved. Because that was the first one in many months. And you know when you're out here witnessing for the Lord, there's, there's nothing like having someone give their lives to Jesus and knowing it's done. Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And that's what we are. Lastly, the Bible says in Jude, chapter, uh, excuse, Jude 20 through 25, excuse me, you know it's one chapter. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. And lastly, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. To God be the glory. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your help delivering it. I pray that hearts and minds are touched for those who don't know you, that they turn to you now. And Father, we, we thank you for your grace upon our lives. Yes, Lord, this is more than a get to. This is a got to. We thank you for Jesus. And I ask that you bless each and every one here as they head out, Lord God. Ask that you keep us all protected. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If there's anyone here who's not saved, we'd be happy. Please come up so we can share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with you. To all you others, have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving, and thank you for your time and attention tonight. God bless you all.